Good afternoon. Um, I'm here to tell you about A-Level Biology. Uh, my name is Mark Bryant and I'm the Head of Biology here at the Sixth Form. Uh, and I'm privileged to lead a team of 10 gifted, experienced and very hard-working colleagues who are the teaching team for Sixth Form Biology. Now we're one of the biggest subjects in Sixth Form with usually somewhere between 100 and 120 students taking the subject each year and that includes this year's Year 12. Now many of our students go on to study biology at university um, or related courses like biochemistry or neurosciences. Uh, we have quite a few future doctors who go on of course to study medicine uh, where biology is now a requirement on many of the courses. Uh, others in other healthcare professions, nursing, midwifery, pharmacy and many go to study at top universities which we're really proud of. However, we attract a wide range of students um, who put the subject with a wide range of others. So some pair it with psychology, it goes well with sports science, geography, and of course the core sciences of chemistry, maths or physics. But many just take the subject for interest's sake. And some of our best biology students take it with, for example, dance or politics or history, um, just because they like the subject. Well, what can you expect to study well, I can't tell you everything. You could, if you wanted to, have a look on Caboodle at the um, contents pages of the textbooks. These are the course textbooks that we use. Um, so, for example, we start Year 12 with looking at cells and enzymes and DNA. And then we look at bigger things, so the circulatory system, breathing system. I'm currently teaching Year 12 about immunology. And then later on, we'll do some ecology and some pretty complicated biochemistry of respiration photosynthesis. So a lot of the topics that you're familiar with from GCSE and hopefully you've enjoyed. Um, but of course because this is an A-level there's a lot more detail and a lot more depth. And the students I talk to in year 12 and 13 say that they find that much more satisfying and rewarding. Let me give you an example. At GCSE you'll be familiar with the fact that when you exercise uh, your heart rate has to increase to deliver more oxygen. Um, but at A-level we want to find out, well, how does it know how to do that? How does it know how much to speed up? How does it know to slow down again? Um, what's actually, what are the signals for making it do that? And how do you make sure that it doesn't just increase out of control? Or currently teaching my year 12s about how exactly vaccinations work. What's going on in the body after you've had a vaccination? So it goes beyond the descriptive, which is largely what GCSE is, to start to put together an understanding of the whole organism and whole, how the whole organism fits together. Strangely, it's not such a rush either, although there's a lot more depth and detail. I know that at GCSE, biology can feel a little bit like one topic being thrown at you and quickly followed by another topic. But we do end up having more time to apply our understanding more time to practice exam questions and more time to do practical work, all of which seems to be appreciated by the students. So I've just done some one-to-one -one progress reviews with my Year 12 students um, and many, many said it was now their favourite subject and they were really enjoying the learning, partly because of the depth and detail and partly because of the slightly more relaxed pace. Well, practical work, lots of people want to know about how the practical work fits in. And the exam board prescribes a minimum of 12 practicals, and we've added quite a few more. Um, now these have to be completed to pass the practical element of the course. And you have to pass skills like measuring things accurately, working safely, using complicated equipment properly, in order to pass what's called your CPAC, practical competency, which a lot of universities are looking for you to have passed in order to start their courses. Um, those practicals also get asked about in the end of course exams. So they might ask you about a practical that someone fictional did and you will remember, oh yes, I did that practical part where you're 13. I remember that clearly. So we've written these practical books to help you. Now they help you think about why you did certain steps and what the results mean. So that if in the exam they ask you, suggest and explain two control measures you might have taken or evaluate the student's results, you've already thought about those sorts of things in lesson using these books. So how else are you examined apart from those practicals? Well, there are three final papers at the end of year 13, each one two hours long. The first is the year 12 work, the second is the year 13 work, and the th third is a combined paper where they ask you a few more data analysis questions and longer response answers. 
So along the way, of course, we give you regular topic tests just to check your progress, to give you a chance to consolidate and revise properly, sort out your misunderstandings. And that's, of course, on top of the weekly marked homeworks that you get from each teacher to make sure you're understanding things as we go along. Now, the grades achieved by students are good. About a third of students gain an A star or an A at the end, and a strong majority, an A star, A, B or C. Uh, so students do well on the course. That's not least because uh, my team of teachers are always happy to help you, whether it's lunchtime or break time. We encourage you to seek help or seek explanation if there's a bit of homework that you're struggling with, just on an informal basis. But in Year 13, we also run revision classes. Uh, we run regular enrichment sessions for those who want to go on and be doctors and regular enrichment sessions for those who are aiming for very competitive biology degree courses. And if you need it, practice interviews too. So, how good do you need to be at biology to take the course? Well, I'd welcome you onto the course if you've enjoyed the subject at GCSE and have done reasonably well. But it is a tough A-level and you won't get very far unless you are prepared to work hard from the beginning and week by week week. So we look for evidence of that at your GCSE. So we're looking for a grade six as a minimum in biology or a seven in combined science. I look at your chemistry grades too and we're looking for at least a five in maths and English. That might seem odd, but there's quite a lot of maths demand, things like ratios and percentage changes and gradients, and quite a lot of English demand because the exam questions can be quite complicated, so you need to be reasonably good at understanding what's written. That's a minimum because we want you to be successful on the course. There are a couple of other questions which I'm often asked. Does it go with such and such a subject? Well, I've already said it goes with many, many subjects um, and sometimes you can just take it for interest's sake. Some people ask, what about if I've just done combined science at GCSE? That's not really a problem at all. Although there'll be areas of knowledge which you don't have quite as much of, you will still be able to demonstrate your ability by getting a good grade in your combined science. And what about if I've come from another school? Well, it's great to teach children who come from other schools. Um, and I guess about a third of the students I teach in each year 12 class, year 13 class, have come from other schools. Um, and on chatting to them, they say that they really enjoy being at the school and they're really enjoying studying A-level biology. So do study it if you've enjoyed it at GCSE and are prepared to work hard. Um, and I think you'll really get on well with it. So do get in touch if you'd like to know more. Um, email the school and we look forward to welcoming you to the subject and to the sixth form in September. Thank you.